Hello, everyone, and welcome to Creative Live. I'm your host, Kenna Klosterman, and we are here on Creative Live, Creative Live TV, bringing you another episode of our podcast, We Are Photographers, where we talk to filmmakers, photographers, industry greats all around the world, uh, coming from my home to yours to theirs, uh, to truly connect as creatives here at Creative Live. We believe there's a creator in all of us, and that includes you. And when we have conversations with creators and filmmakers and photographers all over the world, we truly start to understand that we are not alone in our creative journeys. So today I want to invite you to, as you're tuning in, join the conversation. Let us know where it is in the world that you are tuning in from. You can type that whether you're on creativelive.com slash TV. There is a chat feature that you can join in. Um, or wherever you're watching on our social media. So look forward to giving you shout outs, as I always love to do here. So today we are very excited to bring on a guest for the very first time here on Creative Live. His name is Josue Rivas, and he is a creative director, a multidisciplinary visual storyteller. He's an educator, and he is working at the intersection of art, journalism, and social justice. Uh, his work aims to challenge the mainstream narrative about indigenous peoples, build awareness about issues affecting native communities across Turtle Island, and be a visual messenger for those who are in the shadows of our society. Josue is a 2020 Catchlight Leadership Fellow, a Magnum Foundation Photography and Social Justice Fellow. He's the founder of the Standing Strong Project and the co-founder of Natives Photograph. And Josue's work has appeared in National Geographic, The Guardian, The New York Times, just to name a few. So please help me welcome to Creative Live, Josue Rivas. Josue, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, th thank you for having me. Uh, I'm excited about this stuff. So, Josue, I, I wanted to start with, um, as when I asked you for, you know, what to call your your title, kind of how do it would start from like, how do you summarize yourself, um, which is hard to do. Uh, but um, one of the things you said was that you are an indigenous futurist. So mm -hmm. tell us all what you meant by that, what you mean by that. Yeah, definitely. Um, before I start, I, I want to uh, do a land acknowledgement. If that's okay with you, um, in our yes, traditional please. ways, please. we usually uh, we usually acknowledge the land that we're standing on. So for me, I'm in uh, Chinook territory, um, which is Portland, Oregon, um, and yeah, I just want to acknowledge the the ancestors here and the descendants that will be here in the future, and I just thank them for allowing me to be in their territory today. Um, I and can I interrupt Josue and say, um, I acknowledge I live on uh, Whidbey Island and uh, I'm on the land of the, the lower Skagit, um, mm. also known as the Whid Whidbey Island Skagits. Um, mm. And so um, it's a beautiful, amazing land. And so I'm grateful to to be here as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's like, it's so interesting because in, in, in Australia and even in Canada, um, land acknowledgements are like standard, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, in, but in the U.S., we just, you just can't get to them. Yeah, but, but we're doing it little by little, right? Um, right. So indigenous futurism, it's really, it's really about, for me, it was really about like living, seeing myself in the future and seeing myself as an indigenous person and seeing my descendants as part of the future, as part of the, the narrative of the future instead of, a, I think that a lot of the times, I, I grew up thinking that I was a person of the past or that my, you know, my grandparents or my great grandparents, they were, you know, they were the natives and now I'm, I'm just this being with no identity, you know, because I, I'm living in modern society. Uh, that was told through, through media and that was told through a lot of, uh, a lot of programming, I think, you know, that the, the, all of us go through, but especially, you know, indigenous peoples go through. Um, so for me, indigenous futurism, it's really a philosophy that, that to be honest, I, I'm learning through other artists. Um, Santiago X, who's an amazing multidisciplinary art artist. Um, Jade Bigay, who is another amazing, amazing uh, artist, uh, creative director. Um, and many others that, that, are, that are creating art and they're making things, thinking about the future, not, not thinking about the past, and, but borrowing things from the past. Um, in, in our identity and our roots as indigenous people. So, so yeah, I think that that's, 
in a nutshell, that's that's the that's in a way that the meaning for me of what an indigenous future is, um, to have intention into seeing ourselves in the future. And it's a it's it's a beautiful thing as just as a human, but then also as as an artist, and it's sort of parallel paths of um, you know how does that how does that concept and the way that you think about yourself and identity, um, you know, play into, you know, your art itself. And, and, and so I know that you are, um, tell me about your ancestry as Mexica and Otomi, uh, and, um, yeah. And, and how that interplays into the work that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, you know, growing up in, in a community where, our our songs our um, our identity really was was not was not accepted and was not really you know yeah part of mainstream society in, in Mexico um, and it was almost a little, a little bit of shame you know to to be indigenous um, just because like I said you know you get programmed from from you know from TV to to you know to songs you know super racist things to be honest uh, so for me it wasn't really like Oh yeah, like I'm super proud of being native, you know, or I'm super proud of being indigenous. Um, and I saw through my grandmother uh, and her experience, and really like how that experience of being, you know, shame for who she was, uh, really affected her to the point where she wasn't really, um, yeah, she wouldn't talk about it, and she wouldn't, you know, she wouldn't want us to, you know, to learn any language or anything really that was directed towards towards our indigenous uh, roots. So. Um, for me, that was that was really hard, and and, and at the at the same time, it was there was always a seed inside of me to to kind of reclaim that and, and to learn learn in a way that that it's uh, it's circular, you know, that it's not just like linear, where it's like oh, like I'm you know I'm indigenous or I'm Native American or I'm Mexica or I'm Otomi. It's it's really understanding community, and for me, that's. That's been the biggest, I guess you can say, the biggest blessing is that by building community with different, even different, different tribes, you know, and folks in different tribes, there's that. That's to me what indigenous means, you know, and and really understanding, you know, respect and, and honoring and protocol, and really going into communities that that you know you're a guest, and 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 in that way, I, I in a way that shape who I am, uh, in you know, what the work that you see, even you know, it's. It's very much rooted in not only being being Mexica and not only being Otomi, but also understanding that that I'm a relative to other tribes as well. And and I can imagine that um, your work at Standing Rock um, would have really, you know, sort of solidified that, or or just um, it's you have a project called Standing Strong, and so I, I wanted to. Um, get into talking about that work uh, and the the concept of because I in, in reading about it the concept of um, of co-creating of collaborating in in telling stories mm. uh, and so if you could share with people um, maybe you know both about the standing rock work um, you have a book um, and as well as um, the, the the project itself right now it's Photoville uh, 2020 as we're recording um, you have big displays um, that really allow people to interact um, with these exhibits so I would love to share about the work with with our community yeah definitely uh, so standing rock was and I'm still processing you know all that from standing rock to be honest I've been, I've been after four years uh, but I you know in, in retrospect when I look at that that moment and 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 really the you know the prayers the the you know the reverence that that came along with with this you know protest right like people saw the protest but like I, what I saw was just like like ceremony you know it was it was folks coming from all over the world from all different directions to not only oppose this pipeline but to also Get, come together and, and really build and plant, uh, build the bridges and plant the seeds that that we're seeing, you know, growing right now. Um, anything from, you know, 
Ocasio-Cortez coming out there before she was even, you know, running for anything and, and getting inspired to, you know, to to run and to get into politics to, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, um, folks coming out there and, and strategizing and really understanding that, that these movements were all interconnected and that, you know, the, the liberation of, of our Black relatives goes hand in hand with the, you know, sovereignty of Indigenous people. So, um, that's what I saw, and 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 it was hard because at the moment you, I didn't really know that that was, that's what was happening. I was in like, I was in it, and I was really in, in into the energy of it. And then as, you know, as I started making images and I started seeing things that that I didn't really see other people seeing. You know, everybody was gravitating towards like, let me get a photo of a teepee with a person with some feathers that looks super native, and you know. Let me try to publish it on, you know, on a big outlet because, and then, and then that happened with like thousands of photographers, right? Um, and I think that for me, what, what, what I started seeing and really started tapping into was that I, I knew that my purpose was different than just showing the conflict or just showing the, you know, or just showing up for a weekend, you know. Um, and you know, n nothing wrong with other folks just showing up as they needed to, but I think that deep that, that deep down inside of me i knew that this was going to be a huge moment and and that it needed to be documented from an indigenous perspective and and, and there were a few indigenous folks that, that were documenting and that are amazing you know anything from uh joe whittle to uh camille camille sam uh camille salmon i think her, her last name um national geographic um they were there but we're just a handful you know in, in comparison to like you know hundreds um so that body of work came from that intention of, of giving more than you take, um, showing up with your hands full and not, you know, and really understanding that the, the process of image making, it's, it's evolving and it has evolved already. And I almost feel like we're like behind a little bit, like we're still trying to hold on to this like idea of, you know, of the the Magnum photographer going to Africa and, you know, coming back, you know, the perfect image, you know, the perfect snapshot of, you know, freezing the moment. And I really feel like that's kind of, kind of like, it was, it was the foundation for what I'm doing right now and definitely got inspired. And, and you know, one of my mentors is a Magnum photographer um, and he teaches me a lot about that, but there's just a lot of, of I don't know, just problematic in a way, um, approach you know to 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 thinking that the the image is taken i mean when even when you talk about language it's 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 just like uh, perpetuating that colonial mindset that you're gonna go take you're gonna go capture you're gonna go shoot you know you're gonna do sub subject you know you, you have your subjects so all that all that it's it's within the way we approach things so for me it was and it still is up until now is is thinking about from 10 years from now what are we going to be doing with images and what are we going to be doing with visual storytelling and try to go towards that as much as possible right now because when it hits when we, we you know when we realize oh this is not this is not the same paradigm that we were in in the you know in the 60s or in the 30s um then i think we're going to be a little shocked because you know that the image has to be made you know it has to be um, yeah, it has to be that, that energy of the creation process translates to the image. I, re I remember seeing this, this documentary about this photographer who photographed, it was like this little kid in Africa with a vulture behind them. And he won like a Pulitzer Prize for it or something like that. And I remember seeing that image and I remember thinking, because I think that, that I think he didn't, couldn't handle the, the pressure of winning the Pulitzer Prize and um, and I think he committed suicide. And but I remember seeing that image and just it's just just thinking about that. You know, if you see something like that, if I if I personally if I saw something like that, I would just I would just I would not photograph that first of all, and second of all, I would go help the kid, right? Yeah. I think that that's that's where, I mean, and I know a lot of folks are going to disagree with this, but that's where I think we need to go towards. It's like. Don't just be an spectator of the, don't be just reactive, right? Like, like, oh, Portland is on fire. Let's go and send a bunch of photographers for the weekend to see the conflict. Okay, take them back to New York. Like, it's super reactive. It's like, just go take, 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 take. And why don't you show up with intention? Why don't you show up with 
I'm here to, for example, like standing rock, like I'm here to learn from the community and then create something with y'all together. And you're part of the process too. You're not my subject, you're my collaborator. And I really think that, that that's that old paradigm that has been celebrated for a long time. And people still kind of like celebrate for some weird reason. Um, it's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be dismantled very quickly, I think. And it's already been dismantled and it's gonna be reimagined. And I think that that's, that's where, like, for example, the Standing Strong project comes into play, where it's um, it's thinking of, of the image making process as a form of, um, I don't, I don't want to call it ceremony. It's really like more like ritual. You know, it's like, it's like using these ritualistic indigenous human things, right? Like just being, you know, being good to each other or showing up and creating a space specifically for that person with that intention to honor that person. Not with the intention of, I'm gonna have somebody in front of my camera so I can take something from them, right? So so this process is, is super simple, actually. It's, it's a, uh, we put a, a, a big monitor in front of the person. We get a studio, we set them up, super simple back, black background, and, and the person has a shutter release. So when, you know, the collaborator has a shutter release, so when, they're seeing themselves it's almost like a photo booth right but but a little more fancy and we we have this conversation we have this interview and then and then we get to a point where as, as we talk about their life experience their their hopes their struggles um they open up you you see it you, you can see where the person like goes from from being a little closed up to to just like allowing themselves to be more open and and that's when we start doing the photographs. That, that's when I, you know, we put the, the music they want. Um, we set up a space just, in, you know, sometimes we'll, you know, we'll, we'll smudge and, and cleanse ourselves. Um, and then that's when they see themselves. And that's when they, you know, they click the, the shutter. And the reason why I did that is because looking back at the work of folks like Edward S. Curtis, or even up until now, um, Jimmy Nelson, I think that's his name, um, just seeing that approach and how the person the image has no agency over what the image looks like what the aesthetic is you know what the process of actually making the image is because as soon as that photographer hits the shutter they own that image so what i said is like well you're gonna get to own the image because you click the shutter so it's like i said it's it's, it's reimagining what we did in the past and even until now i mean i know Jim, jimmy nelson has like a 350 dollar book you know um that yeah i don't know who buys those books but i'm pretty sure the people in the photos do not buy those books you know what i'm saying so like it, it's again thinking too it's like who is this for who am i making this image for i'm gonna go into the middle of the amazon and photograph the last of the amazonian people to go sell it and put it in a gallery and get a bunch of money for it so it's again intention it's just we, we're cool with that. We completely normalize people doing that. And I think that we're in a place where we need to re rethink and reimagine it. Um, so after this photograph gets made, the person, we put the stuff on the, on the computer, they pick their image. We go through all of them. We talk about it. Why do you like this one? Why don't you like this one? It's really an interesting process. And then when they pick their image, then we, you know, we'll color grade it in black and white and then we put it in an iPad and then on that iPad, they write their legacy statement. And their legacy statement, it's intended because again, thinking about the future, when you look back at the work, works of Curtis or other folks, you do not hear the voice of the people in it. Like Germans are in love with those images. I mean, I'm telling you it's weird as hell, but they love like, this you no know, Native American with a headdress, you know, which was probably fake, because that's what Curtis used to do, is to put fake headdresses on people. Um, and then put it up in their house, you know, it's just like, oh, I have this native in my house, right? They, like, and again, not nothing against Germans. My wife's actually German, that's why I know these things. Uh, but it's this weird, it's this weird programming where it's like people in Germany think that that's how people in America look like, or the United States look like. They, they think Native Americans, when they go to like the reservations from Germany, you know, they think, oh my God, I'm gonna find a teepee and I'm gonna find a native inside of it. Then I'm gonna go in and they're gonna tell me about my, about my dreams and all this stuff. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to get rid of that in the sense of like, let's redo it, but with contemporary folks 
they get to choose what they want to wear. Some folks are like, I want to wear my regalia. I want to honor my grandmother. I want to my grandfather. Some are like, no, I just want to wear regular clothes. I, I, I don't dress like that every day, you know, only for ceremonial purposes. So then you have this image, you have this statement, and that's thinking about the future. So when people in the future look back at them, their descendants are going to look back and say, oh, that's what my grandfather had to say about himself or about its experience of what you know he or she hoped the world could be like in the future um, or what their legacy was. And then once we have all that process done, then we think about how we can invade space. And by that, I mean that public space, it's, and this trips me out too, is that like we, you know, we see constant ads, right? Like when we, everywhere we go, especially on our phones too, but just physically, we're always being told what to buy, what to do and what to think. So I always wonder how, what if we just grab those spaces and then we put, we, you know, kind of put a little glitch in the matrix and, and, and add people to it, you know, and, and, and you incorporate the, the community, the folks that are in the community that are, that are, you know, not represented and, and, and then people cannot not look like if you're going down the street, there's a huge 15 feet mural, you have to look at it, whether you agree with it or not. Um, because that's what we've been, that's what's doing to us. You know, that's what we've been doing. We just, I see a Ulster commercial and I'm like, I, I mean, I start ad, I'm like, I don't, I didn't ever agree to that, but I have to see it now. Um, so you use the same techniques, but with different intentions. And I think that that's, that's part of indigenous futurism. It's looking at what we, we've done and, and, and being, it's okay to be critical about, about it, I think. I think it's, it's very healthy to be critical about what we've done in the past and then reimagine it and put it in a new way that incorporates um, multiple dimensions. And by that, I mean that it's not just about the photographer. It's not just about the photographer getting awards and it's not just about the photographer getting the recognition. I think that after Sending Rock, you know, I seen the, seeing the, the dignity of indigenous peoples right there, you know, it was the first time in my life I ever felt safe. Before that, I had never felt safe in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, in Chicago. And when I went to Standing Rock, it was the first time in my life where I felt like it's like I'm okay. I'm around my relatives. You know, it's all going to be okay. And I think that's huge because, you know, when we look back at this work from Standing Rock, and it's, you know, not just my work, but like the work of um, many amazing photographers, it's, we still don't understand it. And it's going to take us a while to understand really the impact of that moment. You know, right now we're seeing the, the first wave. And I really think that Standing Rock was the, the awakening of humanity. And in, by that, I mean, is that literally people from all over the world came to Standing Rock and then they went back, you know? And then they planted those seeds in their own communities. And now you're seeing that happening all over the world where, where folks are organizing and they're reimagining their future. Ooh, Josue, there are so many elements um, within, you know, what what we just talked, what you just talked about um, that I want to kind of dip into. But first of all, you know, thank you for for sharing your approach and the experiences and, um, and, and going to, you know, what it meant for you personally, um, and, and how you go about the project. I mean, the, the starting back at the concept of just the, the making, not taking, you know, the collaborating, not shooting the, you know, serving the, the people who are co-creating. I mean, I think the co the concept of having a person be the one who um, is basically, you know, seeing themselves in a different way, looking at themselves in the mirror, and and their choice to mm -hmm. when to click the shutter. But you've created this space for it, um, and I'm I'm curious if from within that project, of, you know, looking at some of the pieces, um, one of the ones that is um, on one of the murals, um, one of the ones I'm, I did a screen grab of it as a woman saying, indigenous health, health flourishes where ancestral love is nourished. And I'm curious if there's anything that was surprising to you or any particular 
person that you photographed that their um, leg their their legacy was different than you know what you would have expected or mm. um, you know was there something that you've learned about yourself through the process of the Standing Strong project you know in addition to that you know feeling safe and feeling um, empowered back at you know Standing Rock. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, th his name is Tekpak. That's the name of the of the young man that the uh, through the process of making this project has impacted impacted me a lot. Um, he's he's a young photographer. He's part of Native Photograph, um, and he came on to the project to support. Now I would I don't, I don't want to call him assistant because I really don't like that word. It's a super weird word. Um, he was he was really a support. I mean, he was obviously helping me with the equipment and setting up the studio and everything. But it was about who he was, you know. Like I really think that that in 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 creative jobs or in you know yeah in productions and things like that, we, we don't think about that stuff. We don't think about what is the energy of the people that are coming into this space. Because to me personally, this is just how I do things. Is when I go and make something, it's like it's a it's a ritual like i said it's just like i need my space to be clean and i don't need any sort of energies that are going to take away from the intention of it. we did the sessions in la he was part of one of the sessions i asked him if he wanted to be part of it um because one of the intentions with the project is also to highlight and to honor that person that is on the photograph so um in a lot of different tribes there's like honoring ceremonies so so you you honor the person with a blanket and 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 you just acknowledge them, you know, in, in life that, hey, you're a great person because of this and this and this and, and thank you. You know, it's it's not after you're, you know, not with the Western way where it's like after you die, everyone talks good about you. Um, but this is, like, you know, in real life, like, let's 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 honor you, you know. So anyway, so take part and, and the way that he showed up for me, it was really, it really, I will never forget that because he, very quiet, you know, he helped me with a lot of the people that we're highlighting. He, you know, he helped me to find them and to really build that bridge. Um, and the way that he did it, it's what, it's what I guess you can say, like just reaffirm the, you know, this idea of like healthy collaborations, right? And um, he is part of a project called I Twenty SP project, uh, along with uh, another photographer. His name is Tomas Carmelo, who's an amazing photographer and. Uh, and uh, Shalene Joseph, uh, who is oh, an amazing creative as well. And they, they they just have this whole thing about healthy collaborations. And um, when I first heard of it and really started seeing, seeing it in person, you know, how they really do these things is, is much more than just um, the, the final product, right? It's like, well, we have to make this really dope. And it's like, yeah, but how do we get there? It's what matters, you know? It's like, if you do it in a good way, if you honor folks and if you try your best to yeah, to to have a circle instead of a line, then then the product will be great, you know. So I think take Pat brought that on to the project, and then and then he made his own photograph, which is amazing. Like I don't know if you saw it on on the things I sent you, but it's just beautiful, like beautiful drawings around his his you know his photograph and everything. Um, and yeah, I think that one that I think that impacted me a lot because he's younger than me. <laughs> But he's older than me, you know. He's like old, the like younger, but he's also like a wise person, um, and he's an amazing storyteller. Like I, I've been trying my best to support him, you know, through this process of him finding his voice and his visual voice too. And then, um, yeah, keep an eye on him. Take Pat. He's a, uh, he's T E K P A T L. I'm writing it down. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's such such a beautiful acknowledgement of what it means to collaborate, create space, uh, and also the creative process. Mm -hmm. And that that's exactly you know creating is you know creating something out of nothing, but with the there's the energy of one person, but then there's when you add the layers of that and the intention and the intention between what is being created, um, that is truly, you know, a, a beautiful thing that helps, you know, everyone involved. And like you come, keep coming back to what is the intention? Who is this image or film or whatever it is, you know, truly serving? 
in the person or then the viewers as well. Um, you you quickly mentioned Natives Photograph, and so I want to. You're the co-founder, and I want to make sure everybody knows. Can you talk to us about what Natives Photograph is, um, the need for it, and um, maybe you know what you've seen um, over over the years since it's been created? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so when I after sending Rock, uh, Larry Tao, that's that photographer who's my mentor, and he's a magnet photographer, and he was like, he was like, hey, like, you know, you're you're pretty good, but you know, but you have a lot to, I like to, I like to learn. And now he's just like in his sixties, he's just like, no, you young ones don't, you know, don't understand the the, the struggle yet. Um, and then he he went through my photos. I remember this. He went through my photos at Standing Rock. We were we were at the, at the casino, in the in the in the waiting area and then he just started looking through my photos and out of like hundreds he picked like two and he was just like these are these are okay and i was just like wow that's that's kind of that's kind of harsh uh, <laughs> but he was being for you know he was just being honest um in his opinion you know with his experience so then he was like you know you should apply for the magnum foundation fellowship for social justice he's like you should i think you will be a good fit i think it will help you a lot to develop your voice um so i applied um while I was standing rock, it was crazy. Like I was trying to apply for this fellowship, like after being like, you know, tear gas and like, you know, just, you know, going to, going to an action and this whole thing. Um, and then I got in, um, got to New York in 2017, we went to New York and we spent some time there. Um, and I think that that was pivotal because as we were in this fellowship, the Magnum Foundation would take us to all these amazing opportunities from National Geographic to meet editors to Time Magazine to, you know, open societies to all these different places that we, that, you know, I, I could have never experienced if it wasn't for, for this foundation and for this fellowship. And then I started seeing just like walking into like, you know, Time Magazine and being like, wow, I see like one person of color here. And it was like, that's weird. And then we had to the, every meeting, it was like, not a person of color that we were meeting. And I was like, wait, you want me to like explain my stuff to this person, but like I will explain it and they wouldn't get it, you know? They'll be like, what are you talking about in, in the future? Like, no, like, come back to the ground, you know? What is your story about? Give me your captions, you know? <laughs> it's like, well, I can't really give you a caption. You know, there's, there's, there's much more to it than just a sentence. And I, I just right away did not vibe with it. I was just like, this is weird. I don't know what the heck this is, but I don't like it because everywhere I saw there was a lack of indigenous folks. And, and, and I noticed that, right? I was just like, wait, you're telling a story about Pine Ridge, South Dakota, but you've never been to Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and you're sending someone from New York to Pine Ridge, South Dakota to tell a story about people that they never even heard of aside from, you know, some other photographers work and that's not really how it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, so then I was like, I'm pretty sure there's other people in Pine Ridge, South Dakota that can tell this story and not someone from New York. So then Daniela Sagman, who is the founder of Women's Photograph, uh, we started chatting uh, uh, over like Instagram and then text and then just kind of like started developing this, you know, she she has done a lot of work with um, Science of Your Identity, who is, which is her project about the boarding school system survivors um, and then she was just really you know she just really wanted to to find a way to to make something happen when it came to a database and we had uh, other folks that were also involved in the process of, of helping us build that and um, and yeah we you know she, she she's really she works really hard so like she's like we're gonna do this like it actually happens you know uh, I'm more of like up here or she was just like yes like this is gonna happen and like let's Let's put it in the database and let's contact them and let's get that photos and um yeah and and you know the the database was born and and we had um at first we had like 14 15 folks and it has grown it's not humongous you know it's like maybe around like 30 photographers um that are working in indigenous communities throughout throughout the country and also in mexico and um some of them are in canada um so the idea behind it was to and it's still, you know, still developing. Really, it's 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 really to find community within ourselves as indigenous storytellers, and then also 
when you look at the opportunities that, for example, like a lot of foundations or a lot of like fellowships have, um, they, I mean, up until now, because people feel really guilty about diversity, but before that, like, yeah, like the people that will, you know, let's give you $50,000 to go document someone in Africa, and but you're not African. Uh, you're going to just go in, you know, try your best. Uh, and it was usually non not people from those communities, you know, it was usually a, a um, European descent male, you know. Um, so with that, it was like, you know, it's, it's, we need to find a way to get these folks who are doing community work as well to, to get those fellowships and to get those opportunities. And now, you know, we, we had folks photographed for New York Times, um, National Geographic, some of our members are National Geographic Explorers now, um, which is such a weird term. I don't know why they do that. Explore. <laughs> it's just, I'm telling you, this is it's like we have to upgrade the system. Like It's like your computer is out of date, and we have to be like, let's look at our stuff. And all right, Explorers. All right, guys, I don't think we should do that anymore. We should call them something else. Um, just because, again, it's, it's, we're living in that paradigm. But... But a lot of these photographers are, are working. I encourage everyone to go look at Natives Photographs uh, website, to our Instagram, um, and go follow those photographers. Honestly, the some of the best work you're gonna find about Indigenous peoples it's in that database. You know, it's it's there's no like there's projects like Matika Wilbur who is photographing every single tribe in the United States. Like nobody's doing that because nobody's willing to do that, right? And and but she's doing it. She's been doing it for years. Um, you have Tech Pat, who, you know, it's an amazing storyteller when it comes to talking about the environment and the land and and the and the relatives, you know, the landscape as as a, as a living thing, you know. And that's what he's focusing on. And you have a uh, Taylor uh, Irvine, who it's uh, working on uh, themes around like blood quantum and how that has affected her community. Um, and then, you know, the, the complexities of, of being indigenous and, and having to stay within your tribe so that you don't lose status, you know, like, um, <clears throat> so these are, yeah, if you, if you all can go check it out, it'll be amazing. And, and yeah, and, and go and go hire them. If you're, a, if you're an editor, if you're, you know, if you have a commercial job, um, it's weird. It's an, up until like, like, the, like the Black Lives Matter stuff that I have gotten so many people just like, we want to hire a native first person because we realize that this story is about a native person and it will be much better and much more accurate if we brought our native person in. And I do want to clarify, because this is something that is has come up since the beginning of Native's Photograph, usually by older photographers, is that they're like, well, the native people should only photograph native people. And I don't, I don't believe that at all. However, I think that there's a process of reparations that's happening where in balance, where it's like, Native folks have not been had the chance to tell their story uh, of their communities. So let's let's bring it up. Let's uplift that so that we can at least come to a, um, a space where we're having the inside and the outside, right? Um, right now, it's just been the outside. Like some of these photographs from, I mean, some, some photographers have done a lot of damage to indigenous communities through their photographs. Let's just say that. You know, they've perpetuated stereotypes and they perpetuated, um, you know, they, they damage the, yeah, they damage like the identity of those folks. And I think that, that that's the kind of stuff that, that we're trying to bring up so that we don't do that. And then we, we show, it's like you, you do it by showing, right? So like you show folks, this is how you do it. Or this is one way you can do it. And let's try that way from moving forward. Because I do think that the future is going to be uh, collaborations all across the board. You know, it's going to be... Uh, like me, like me and Daniela, you know, like me and Daniela are we're not both indigenous, but I saw something in, in 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 really the intention of what she was doing this with this photograph, and I still continue to see that that drive. You know, she truly wants to see folks get get their opportunity. You know, um, because it just takes one time. You know, it's um just. I have uh, for folks who are listening right now or watching right now, um, 
I did have uh, Daniela Zalkman on the podcast as well, um, just recently, and she's also the uh, founder of Women Photograph, uh, and her work is incredible. Um, so I highly encourage you to check her out. And Matika with our 562 project is um, just phenomenal work. Um, I was one of the early backers of when she just was starting a Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, Many, many years ago. And in fact, when we started this podcast, um, I tried to get her on as, um, and that was early on. Anyway, she's an incredible storyteller and what a massive undertaking, like you said, like nobody else is doing that. Um, it's it's really beautiful. And then she had a baby. And so, <laughs> yeah. okay. you know, try, still, if you're listening out there, Matika, I'd still love to have you all on the yeah. podcast. I'll, I'll, I'll ask her, but you know, she's she's a she's a very special person that that, that only does things that are. And again, maybe I ask her, but I think that is most importantly is that she she's invested herself for years and and you know left everything behind, you know, sold everything she had and got this this vehicle to just go travel. And I think that when I talk about like the, these opportunities, is that I think that the opportunities should go to people like that, you know that. That are not that are not chasing a story that is like 24 hours, or you know, or that is going to just perpetuate stuff. I really think that, and you know, and, and, and it's tough explaining this to folks that are like older. And I, I'm just saying older just because of like the paradigm, just where folks are, you know, feeling really threatened by by this this new paradigm, you know. And, and um, I'm sure when I'm old, like. <laughs> Young kids are gonna be like, "We should do holograms," and I'll be like, "No, let's not do holograms." Maybe I'll say we'll do holograms. I probably will stay open. <laughs> um, but I think that I think that that's the biggest gap in my mind. To 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 kind of yeah, like I feel like how can I say this? Um, if if the paradigm of photographers, like for example, like Larry, right? Like Larry Tao, like he. We don't agree on everything. Like we 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 don't. We, we there's times where we get in arguments about certain things, in a healthy argument. So you know it's it's I challenge his point of view. He challenges my point of view, and then we come to a you know okay well that's why you're thinking that's why I think and let's just work together to make sure that we're learning right. I feel like that's so healthy and so important because. I mean I don't know about y'all but like I I want to live in a world and I want my kids to live in a world where where there's healing and there's reconciliation. I don't want to live in a world where we're constantly like battling each other, you know. Um, and I think that that's gonna come from from being flexible and and um, you know, in in the creative space, at least in the creative space, I know for a fact that there's so much work to do, and 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 no, it can be done by one database or it cannot be done by one group of people. It's that it's gonna move forward and it's gonna get fast track to a place of healing and reconciliation when the folks that that might have perpetuated that come forward and, and educate themselves about these these paradigms that are coming forward and then and then just kind of start moving towards that you know towards those I mean it's called reparations but it's like yeah it's 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 reparations in the sense of like in your mind it's reparations I don't want your money I don't want your handouts I want you in your mind to think, ah, oh, that was kind of weird. Maybe I shouldn't do that, you know? Um, so I think that, that, yeah, I don't know why we got into this, but I think that it's really important to, to for me at least in my work and, and in the people that are, and how I do things to, yeah, to remember that in the future, I think the future is going to be indigenous. And what I mean by that is that I truly believe that folks are going to come back to a place of remembering who they are. And remember that we're the human beings and remember that we all have ancestral roots to tribes all of us like not just brown people all of us and then we're gonna be like wait hold on i have to borrow from that in order to go there because what we're gonna be facing and what we already are facing is something we never faced before you know so when you tell stories and, and you start doing the work, whether it is in your industry or whether it is in your in your in your group of people that you work with or your own company, then that that that's gonna have an effect. It's just as simple as that. It's gonna 
you'll see the results. Or like my friend Lila says, you know, you have to plant seeds for trees that you never see the fruits of those trees. Mm. And so it's like, we have to plant those things like now. <laughs> like I think about like the other day, um, I was thinking about death. I, ha I had this weird thing with, in my twenties where I was like, I was super like scared about death. I was just like, ah, I don't, I never want to die. And I started thinking about that in the sense of like, um, I saw this friend who is, his, uh, his friend passed away and he posted about it on Instagram. He's this young kid, like, which is, by the way, it's, it's a huge epidemic of suicide in indigenous communities. I don't think this was a just suicide though. Um, but anyways, he, he, I saw that and it, it just freaked me out because I was like, man, this kid had like so much potential. He was, you know, he was a visionary. He had like something that he was going to sh share with the world and, and he's not going to get to do that. But when you, when you do the things every day, just thinking about the fact that you might not get to see these things, like, that's why, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, you know, because, um, yeah, like in a hundred years, I might not be able to see the fruits of, of us making a database for indigenous photographers, but, you know, <laughs> but hopefully in the future, you know, that, you know, the photo editor at Time Magazine will be an indigenous woman, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. It's just, that's what I think about. Well, it's, it, it again goes back to intention, um, you know, why, why you do what you do, why, and, and the message, you know, being for all of us out there, you know, take a look at, at why you do what you do. Um, that awareness, the, um, the, like you said, not just, um, looking at how things have been and, and truly, you know, listening and really, I mean, when you, when, when you say the words out loud, like, like you said, like explorer or, you know, those kind of colonial terms that are just part of, you know, the way that we, that we talk. And it, it really, you know, it, it, the, like going back to, like you said, takes, taking an, an awakening. Um, it, it's, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's really an incredible approach as well to be, um, again, using that creativity to think about legacy and, and, and how, you know, how we want this earth and the future to be. Um, I, I, a couple of things that, you know, you, you use the word heal and, um, and I've seen you uh, say that, you know, you do, you, be, you know, believe that the camera can heal. And I, I wrote this as a note um, that you believe the camera can heal and the people who are depicted in your images tell you the same um what do you think that the this this is it the the reflecting of seeing yourself is it is it what is the this the power of of imagery and healing hmm. yeah i think uh i mean there's things that, that i i felt in my life i couldn't say because of yeah like the society around me or or the, you know, the, the systems that were around me that, that, that were telling me, you know, your voice doesn't matter or, you know, or, you know, you, that voice is, is, or that perspective is, is too out there, you know? And I always felt that that stuff's a little kid, to be honest, like I will go to school and I will be like jumping on the tables and be like, I don't want to be here. You know, <laughs> I want to go home and like do some art or, you know, my dad's a photographer. Um, my dad's a photographer. He's also addicted to alcohol. Um, so since I was a little kid, I, I had this, this hate for photography. Wow. I actually hated it. Um, let me see if I have my camera. My, up until later, when I was 21, my dad gave me, he gave me a camera and, you know, it was weird. It's like resent, resentment, you know, it's just like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't really care for this. Um, but, uh, after a very traumatic thing that happened, uh, where I almost, yeah, I was almost dead. Um, then I picked up the camera. I asked one of my friends, Hey, I really want to learn and can I borrow your camera for, you know, can I take it for a spin? And, um, 
I lived in I lived in Southern California at the moment, and uh, I would always see these houseless folks around my neighborhood. That you know, they're just part of the you know the, the process of living in in the hood a little bit. Um, and then I just started like hanging out with them and just yeah, just like I just had this compassion for them because I can relate to them. You know, uh, I had this. I didn't see them as just like, oh, you're just like a bunch of drug addicts, you know, or like, you know, I didn't judge them. I just, I, I instead came with my camera and I was like, I'm here to, I'm here to get to know you. And also if you want to take a portrait, cool. If you don't, we don't. And I remember this, I'll never forget this. There was this, this friend who, <laughs> he, he was just like the, like the most alive of, of the, the community, the houseless folks. And he was just like, I, I photographed him and then he goes, Hey, you got to print that for me. You got to bring it back to me. Like he was just kind of, you know, his own little world. And, and I brought it back to him and he, it was a portrait of him and he saw it. And then he, he said, I don't want to be like this anymore. He said, I don't, I don't want to look like this anymore. I want to take my life back. Um, and then, yeah, you know, surely enough, he, he went to get clean and then he got into this program where, where folks were, you know, being, being taught how to, how to have an apartment, you know, how to get, hold a job and things like that. Um, for me, that's, that's why, you know, it's like, I, 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 being able to say things that I couldn't say about myself, about my experience, but then also giving those same tools to somebody else to do that. Um, sorry, my son is in the back. Yeah, um, yeah, being able to do that, I think brought me to a place where I realized the power of this thing. You know, it's like the image is far more, the image is far more, um, far more useful than, than just like taking something, you know, or just, yeah, I think that there's a lot to that. And, and, um, and for me, I think, you know, as, as I'm doing these projects, as I'm like learning about how to make this a little bit more forward thinking, um, I, I, I think about social media a lot, you know, like, like, you know, I'm a photographer, I'm a visual storyteller, I'm a, you know, I direct music videos, I direct commercials, I do all these different things that are super, you know, oh, you're the director, or, you know, whatever. But then I look at like TikTok. <laughs> And I'm like, that's the future of, it's not the future, that's a present of how we're telling our stories. And they're far more, far more effective than paying somebody thousands of dollars to go direct a commercial. Like you've probably seen the the, the video of, uh, his name is Dogface, he's, he's, he's a homie. Okay, so, so Dogface, like he was already doing cool stuff before like this cranberry stuff, right? And flip it with Mac. But, but, but that was a glitch. Again, th this is what I'm trying to say is that like in the future, we're not going to go back to like, you know, corporations paying thousands of dollars to a director to document something or to make some, you know, I mean, I'm sure there will be parts of that, but, but the person, the individual can tell their own story now. You know, I have this thing, uh, I started curating this feed called indigenous TikTok. Um, you, you probably saw it. You go into the world of TikTok and then you're like, wait, hold on. These folks are making some amazing content that, excuse me, that, that nobody else could make for them because they know their story and they know their perspective and they have the tool to do it. They have everything within that. So I think that that's, that's what I'm interested in a lot right now, to be honest. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with how that video of Dogface has gone viral and how that's gonna sh just think about that 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 little moment you know how the like 20 seconds 30 seconds whatever reminded everyone that saw it that life's gonna be okay it's all gonna be okay like we have fires here in portland we have protests we have you know we have something in the white house um that you know all those things <laughs> Are we, are we let's talk about politics. I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you asked me, you're like, what did you know? I'm like, I can talk about anything. So uh. we only have a few minutes left. So we okay, don't good. need to go there. Let's, let's not go there. Yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> uh, but no, that, I mean, that 
first of all, yes, you've got, uh, is it indigenous TikTok? So you're bringing, you're curating from TikTok and bringing it onto Instagram, which I really appreciate um, it, it is, um, as I'm this, you know, old lady who's like not taken on TikTok, <laughs> but like personally, because there's, yeah, no, I don't know. Um, but um, the, the again, going back to the power of the individual being able to tell your own story, you know, the, the, that's the intention, you know, that's the, the not, you know, we talk a lot about right now, you know, helicopter journalism, as you were talking about, where people swooping in, like how nobody else could have, you know, told his story um, in, in that little moment, um, you know, literally, you know, holding, you know, the, the camera himself. Um, and so I think I saw also that, so you're, like you said, you direct videos, um, you're the creative director um, for an artist, and he... Uh, his song was used as well in another video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, so what I did, it was, it was, I think, and this is a lot of the behind the scenes that I do for, for brands or, or bands or, um, yeah, like public figures or whatever. Like I, I'm also a social media strategist. So I, I try my best to connect again, going back to that idea of like, like hiring the indigenous folks to do things like, I'm, I'm always like, let's connect Nike with an indigenous storyteller that that could challenge Nike to think differently and, and then go into a place of, uh, you know, collaboration there. Um, and I'm learning that a lot through this, uh, through this mentor of mine. His name is Obeth uh, over at Industry PDX. It's a, it's a creative agency here in Portland that, that I've been getting really close to. Um, so it's just, it's just really getting into this way of, how can I say this? Like, like dog face. Well, first of all, dog face was just like, he's just amazing. But when I was like, Hey dude, like, can you use two Tesca's, uh, that's the name of the, I, I, um, the musician that I work with. I was like, can you use your Tesca's song for, he just released a new song. Can you please use it for, for your next video? You know, um, and he's down, you know, he, he was, he was on to do it. It just seen the power of that, right? Like the power of, of, incorporating like Fleetwood Mac suddenly became relevant again because of this dude, right? So you start thinking that it's all, it's all a game. It's just how you, do you have intention behind your game? And, and, and I think that that's where that's again, it's, it's just, it's it, a lot of these companies and corporations and people that pay a bunch of money for stuff like they actually realize that that the that where you should invest is in the individual now, you know, and like folks that are like really, really honing in into telling their story in a very unique and authentic way, instead of like, you know, especially through COVID, like, you know, Jesus, you, you want to hire, you know, that, that video, I'm sure Fleetwood Mac is super happy because their, you know, their, their streams went up, like, and, and he was a native person doing it too, you know, uh, he's Ar Arapaho, so, it's just really interesting to me. Again, it's just it's those glitches, and and I'm interested in doing that. It's like throwing the throwing a, a curveball into the matrix to see what happens. Um, and also the people that I surround myself with that, that that constantly teach me about about that. About hey, Josue, like you you have a very unique perspective. So you know, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And 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 those are the folks that really you know that like my wife. You know, like. I, my wife is the only person that can tell me now, <laughs> you know, she's just like, no, that doesn't work. And I'm like, well, tell me why. Cause like, I really respect your opinion. You know what I mean? Like I'll be working on a project and she just gave me her honest opinion. And, and it's because of people like that, that, that I think that my work, you know, makes sense, you know? And, and yeah. And, and, and it gets noticed because it's not just me, you know, it's, it's also my ancestors, you know, like also my descendants. Like the people that are not born yet, that they already are with with me. Um, so yeah, it's I or I know we're running out of time, but I did want to I I rewatched this morning um, your your short film feature ancestor, um, and one of the things that stood out to me was this concept of um, of a leader, you know, not not being somebody to 
uh, make decisions for other people, but really to just give voice to other people, hold space for, um, you know, being the messenger. And in, in watching that and thinking about all the work that, that you do, all the collaborations, and I mean, it really, you know, I see you as that leader and that messenger. Um, and, and I'm wondering if you can just kind of share some, some words, final words out there for other photographers and filmmakers and creatives, um, how to be that, how to, how to approach your work as that messenger. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to quote, uh, I'm going to quote Hank Willis Thomas, who has blown my mind like insanely in the last like two weeks because I, we kind of like started chatting on Instagram and um, I'm part of this wide awakes uh, community that uh, they started with a lot of different folks that are, you know, this, yeah, this community of artists and thinkers and all these different things. And, and he said this, he said, there is no conflict in infinite space. And I was like, damn, that's, that's deep. And it's simple too, is that I think that if we're making images, if you're telling stories, there's a, there's a level of surrendering that, that I personally think is helpful, you know, and, and knowing that, um, can, can your, can your work, um, live through time, you know? And, and I think that that's, that's really what I would say. It's 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 uh, think about the future and 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 look back to your past. So like honor your ancestors when you're doing your work, and then think about your descendants because you already are your descendants and you already are your ancestors. You know, and and I think that that's that's huge. And it might be it might be like crazy talk right now for some folks, but I can assure you that that it's as simple as just like you know just taking a second to acknowledge where you came from and to ambition where you want to go, yeah. That's a really powerful statement. Um, and because, right, if you, like, it's, it's, it, it's, like you said, it's simple. We're all the same thing. And when it comes down to the, like, the molecular level and all of that, you know, being our ancestors, our future, um, and, and, it's um, what a beautiful thing. There's no conflict. Uh, in infinite space. In infinite space, and that's <laughs> that's all there is, right? And yeah, it, yeah, and it, it, it turns me out because when when he said that, I was just like, it brought me like it was really it was a tough time. We had just left from the fires from here from Oregon. Um, and then we were in Idaho and I was really having a hard time and, you know, in a hotel and just like trying to create just to stay sane, you know? Um, and yeah, he, he, you know, we started chatting about some projects that I was working on and it came to be that, you know, he talked about that. He said, there's, there's no, there's no conflict in infinite space. And, and I, if, if there's a moment to make, and there's a moment to, to tap into that, infinite consciousness and in that in the original dream you know of who we all are it's right now i mean up until last night i was like trying to go to sleep with a bunch of anxiety about all the stuff that's happening i was just like man like like what's going to happen tomorrow we're going to have a, an earthquake tomorrow a solar flare or you know whatever and then i was like and then i went to sleep just trying to remember that it's already it's going to be okay you know, and and we're and we have to take action and make stuff right now. Cause right now everything amplifies. Like if there's one thing that sticks, just like dog face, like that video stick, is going to amplify it throughout the consciousness of, of humanity. So I'm making with the intention that yeah, that the you know, the effects and the the sound of of that work um, touches, touches the hearts of the people, you know? How, and how beautiful is that? Um, and 
I just, I thank you. Um, thank you for sharing your stories. There's so many more uh, much work and projects that, that you've done. And I would just love and encourage everybody out there to go um, find you, follow you, hire you, um, all the things. Where Where is the best place to uh, for people to find you? No. Yeah, I think Instagram will be a good... I, I, I tend to be more active on Instagram. Um, at Josue, J-O-S-U-E underscore photo is f-o-t-o awesome and and then of course your website as well um josue rivas photo again with the f not the ph right yeah and then from there you can um again on your instagram you've got all the links um to all the other projects you're involved in natives photograph uh, and um there's just so much to explore uh, there's the films on your website that people can watch or link to, uh, your TEDx talk. I didn't even talk about that. Uh, but just uh, uh, so many th beautiful things that you are creating and co-creating um, for now and for the future. Um, so thank you so much uh, for being on Creative Live, for sharing your stories uh, with the global audience. Um, and so we've got Carlos, who is saying, Jefe, an amazing artist and human. Uh, we have uh, Dave, who was watching from Phoenix, Ralph in Colorado. Um, we have Bud in Wisconsin, Arizona, uh, Dave. So thank you. Thank you to all of you for, for tuning in. Um, and um, thank you, Josue. Very much um, appreciate your time and intentions uh, with our conversation. Yeah, I appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you for reaching out to do this. It was, it was, uh, yeah, I usually don't do things like this too much, but I, I felt good about it. So, well, it's our, it's, it's our honor, and um, that's that, you know, beautiful energy when it's there. So, everybody, um, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, you can hear all of the past episodes of and future, past and future episodes uh, of our We Are Photographers podcast uh, by going to creativelive.com slash podcast uh, and check out what is playing here on Creative Live TV coming up. And um, again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Josue. We will see you all next time. Thanks again. Hey guys, what's up? It's Chase Jarvis, founder and CEO of Creative Live. You all know that we have more than 2,000 classes and more than 10,000 hours of learning, inspirational, and motivational content on the platform. I'm super excited to announce a new experience on Creative Live. It's called Fast Class. You've told us that you're busy and sometimes it's hard to dive into a full class from start to finish. So, essentially we're now giving you a shortened highlight version of our top Creative Live classes. You can always dive into the full class with 5, 10, or 15 hours of great content, but now if you're just looking to focus on a few of the highlights or want to be able to skip quickly to something that really interests you, you can now get a shortened fast class version of that class. We're also thinking this might be able to help you explore a new craft and save time while doing it. This is a great tool to curate your learning experience to help create the life that you seek. So you're probably thinking, great, how do I access this new experience on Creative Live? That's easy. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the Creator Pass, and then all this is yours. If you're feeling isolated and looking for creative connection, Try tuning in to creativelive.com slash TV. That's where we've got a 24 seven live stream from the kitchen counters. I can do that back lit shot that I really like to do. From the studios and living rooms of many of the world's top creators where we're doing musical performances, Q and A's, cooking shows, virtual book tour events, drawing, spoken word poetry, and more. Life passed me by waiting for an invitation when the world is greater than my nation or my occupation. Be someone you've never been. You feel all that adrenaline, it's medicine. 
It actually helps me feel like my days are more purposeful. I hope that out of this deep pain will come some collective growth. Dive into Creative Live TV today.